Today we're talking about Flash for Files and does it make sense to use Flash for unstructured data. Joining me to help with that conversation is Chandra Mukala for IBM Storage. Chandra, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. Where are we seeing a use case for Flash and how does that fit in? To, to talk about that, we should really talk about the evolution of file storage. Okay. Where did it start? Where is it today? And why the changes in the file storage? So let me quickly draw this picture. Okay. It explains uh, how file storage has evolved uh, in the last, uh, I'll say, a decade plus. You know, f after the time where we had a file system like Windows or Linux running on block storage, the first purpose-built file storage, you know, was uh, you know was a scale-up NAS appliance, right? You know, I think NetApp made it very popular. I would say. Uh, early 2000s, right? Right. Early 2000s, this became very popular. Scale up NAS. It met the need very well at that time. Right. And then and that was like a lot of home directories. And, yeah. And I stuff was like about that. About to say that you know the yeah. primary use case was home directories, but basically a place to store your file-based data, a common right. shared storage for file data. That worked very well for I'll say you know up to you know early 2010s. From there, there was a need for you know, uh, these scale-up NAS was working well, except you ended up with multiple filers, right. you know, for each department, you know, for for uh, for different use applications, right. you know, you ended up with yeah, two things. the old line was your first filer was great, your 50th file exactly. kills you, right? Then came up scale-out NAS. Right. This solved the problem of, you know, I got a bunch of boxes, I'm going to combine them into one single box, right? You know, all of these are treated as one big box. Right. You have a common namespace across them. It presented and it, it 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 was scaling performance also. Right. It became very popular mainly for uh, industry use cases, where they cared about you know I need I have lots of storage but I also need performance. I want the performance to scale. So like it's, uh, uh, media and entertainment. Uh, media and entertainment, a big one. Uh, I would say uh, life sciences for sequencing, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I would say in the oil and gas industry. You know, for seismic analysis, right? Right. So it, these are all very industry apps. They needed a lot of performance, sure. um, and they also needed uh, lots of capacity consolidated. Uh, it worked well. Now, and I think we are at this point now, okay. where we are meet, we are talking to customers where they're not able to meet their performance needs with scale out NAS. Right. And I'm talking about clients in the commercial enterprise, mm -hmm. not necessarily in the industry. Sure. There, uh, there's a lot of talk about we got all of this data and we need to make sense out of it. Right. And that's where big data analytics comes. Right. So analyzing the data and, and understanding what you have. Correct. When okay. you're talking about analyzing lots of data, I'm talking about petabyte class data. Sure. You need a lot more performance. Right. And one of the problems in scale out NAS is it's depend it's limited by the protocols. You know, this typically uses NFS or SIFS to access the data. Right. Um, now, there is actually a technology which was very popular, which is very popular in the high performance uh, computing industry, mm -hmm. not so much in the commercial enterprise, but suddenly this is becoming a necessity. Parallel file systems. Okay. So the ability, so just to kind of clarify that, with with like a, a an SMB or a, an NFS mount, it's a, it's a really a single threaded access into Correct. these. So even though this is a scale out, it's still kind of a single thread, it's right? It's a point to point protocol. Right. And now this is, I can have multiple threads going. Correct. You, yeah, got, okay. you got these clients. The thing is, the parallel nature is also there on the client side. You know, there's a uh, there's a client here, a parallel file system client, which is there on every one of these boxes. Right. Every one of those boxes has parallel access to this. Yeah, but even if it's a single file, every one of these boxes can access, or every one of the clients can read and write to the same file. Right, and in these use cases, there's essentially a, a center point that all of those clients have to get to, right? Exactly. Okay. So this is becoming essential, in fact, a necessity for analytics workloads. Right. Uh, think Spark. Right. Right. Think Splunk. You know those kind of workloads, and it's it's not uh, uh, limited to again to high performance world. It's, okay. it's for every organization is becoming a digital organization. Right. And when you talk about a digital organization, they have they want to analyze the data to get some insights out of it. Right. And, and well, this is as we were talking earlier, Spark and Splunk in particular, the, the, everybody has log data. Everybody has those. So exactly. it's not like you got to go deploy this massive Internet of Things project. You have things right now that are generating log data that you need to analyze, right? Yeah, Spark and Splunk, I would say, are some of the you know the most common use cases, right? Um, but yeah, in general, big data analytics. And, right. and another thing about this is we're not talking about small, you know, a few terabytes, 100 terabytes. Right. This is typically, it's not uncommon to get into petabyte class. Right. And that's another thing, because it's a parallel file system, that the system is designed, file system is designed from the ground up to be distributed in nature. Right. You can keep scaling both performance and, and the capacity seamlessly just by adding additional nodes. Uh, and uh, 
it's uh, you get performance scalability here but it's limited right i mean even the best solution here has a limit of like about 144 nodes right. that's not the case here so then let's also talk about flash here because i think one of the key differences as we get into analytics is to analyze data it's not like a database where i'm sort of looking up a specific record right i've got to kind of churn if you will across a whole bunch of things and the faster i can get across those things the better right right so so far flash has been primarily used for block storage applications. Right. It's been a, a SAN controller. All flash arrays in the right. market are SAN, SAN controllers. Right. Now, flash brings a lot of benefits uh, around performance and you know economic benefits, which, which are well known. Right. In the file world, when you talk about performance, it's either throughput or latency. Sure. You can add throughput by simply adding drives. Right. Right. But when it comes to latency, you do need that high, high resp highly responsive media, and that's right. where flash comes in. Now, so far the flash was not affordable for, for file-based storage. Right. It's, it has such a high price premium that you could afford for analytics workload. Right. But IBM recently introduced uh, something called Deep Flash. Okay. It's a new class of flash, right? It's, 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 uh, it's, it kind of sits in between high performance disk drives and the conventional flash with respect to price and performance. It's okay. lower cost than the conventional all flash array, right. but much higher performance than the 15K drives. Mm -hmm. So we are able to take advantage of this deep flash, mm -hmm. which is a very dense flash. In a 3U, you can get up to half a petabyte okay. of capacity. This is a very dense flash, lower cost than the conventional, and we are able to use that with this parallel file system as an integrated solution called deep flash elastic storage server. Elastic storage server is an existing offering from IBM. Um, what we did is, uh, it, it was an integrated solution with our spectrum scale parallel file system. Okay. Now we are, use, we are able to use Flash as the backend to increase the application response times. We actually, uh, SpecSF is the most well-known benchmark when it comes to file-based storage. Sure. And they've recently created a, a latest version of the benchmark, uh, it's 2014 is the version. Uh -huh. What they did is, they actually made the benchmark by workload. Okay. Uh, because, you know, talking about throughput without actually talking about application is, is doesn't make sense. Same thing with latency. Right. So by workload. So for one of the workloads, we compared the performance of a hard drive-based version versus the flash-based version, and right. we were able to see 8x improvement Wow. in um, application response times. Now, I think the other big thing here is this 3U and a half petabyte, right? Because that, that density is something that's really unique to the attributes of Flash as well, correct? It is. Yeah, yeah. You, you can get that kind of uh, capacities. Um, even if you can, you, you won't be able to get the same response times. Right. Right. So it's not only faster time to insights, but you're getting the secondary economic benefits about shrinking your rack space needs. Um, another thing to know is, we compared a hard drive based solution. You know, we took the biggest drives available, eight terabytes, mm -hmm. uh, and to get up to 25 gigabyte by gigabytes per second with this elastic storage server solution, we needed about 28 U of uh, space. Wow! And we were able to get the same thing by uh, using about 10 U of rack space. Wow! And that's a uh, that's a significant saving because every data center I talk to today, space concern is is a big issue for them. Right. And then obviously the value of uh, the the integrated system is time to value is just going to be that much quicker, right? Right, so yeah, integrated system is, you know, not everybody has the expertise uh, to mm -hmm. build something on their own. In the end, you need to be very storage savvy to understand what's the right HBAs to use, what's sure. the right NIC cards to use, how do I size this, unless you are very, have a lot of expertise, which is typically what service providers do, but the average commercial enterprise, they want something quick to deploy, something they can just plug in and, and begin to use. And that's where the value of an integrated system comes. And that's what the Deep Flash Elastic Storage Service is. It integrates the parallel file system, which in, uh, in our case is a spectrum scale, right. and, and Deep Flash with its own rate. Okay. Actually, Azure coding. Okay. It has uh, everything. So everything's packed, protected. Protected. You know, you okay. got you know, Azure uh, coding protection, and you know, this is a JBOF, JBOF. It stands for just a bunch of flash. Mm -hmm. This is not a SAN controller, and and that's why we have our software-defined RAID. Um, that takes care of all takes that. Takes care form. of that as an integrated right. solution. All right, so Chandra, who's who's using this type of solution? Well, Spectrum Scale is a very matured uh, offering. Right? You know, it was known as GPFS in in the past. And if you look at GPFS, it's used by you know, nine of the 10 top automobile manufacturers. It's used by 12 of the 15 top investment banks. It's used by you know, four out of the five top insurance companies. It's used by a, you know, a, almost the top 18 of the 25 retails, retailers. It's mm -hmm. there everywhere. It's been in the market for about 15 years as GPFS. Right. Uh, we just took that and, uh, and uh, added a lot of more data management capabilities and calling it Spectrum Scale now. 
And, and so the important thing there is you're not jumping into the deep end with somebody you never heard of before. This is a product that's very mature, been out in the market, and very well vetted, right? Exactly. All right. Well, Chandra, thanks for joining us. Today. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. So there you have it. Flash for files makes a lot of sense, especially as we drive into the analytics and analysis use cases. So, but the key is to really drive down the price and hit the appropriate balance between the cost of hard drives and the cost of flash, and then also leverage density. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland.